Hi everyone and welcome back to Building Websites in R with Distill. In today's tutorial, we are going to jump straight into building our website in R Studio and getting everything set up with GitHub. So to start, we're going to go to github.com and sign in. And once you're signed in, we are going to create a new repository where all of our files for our website are going to be stored. So to do that, you're going to find this green button um, and click on new. So here we're going to create our new repository and we're going to give our repository a name. So here I'm just going to call this distill tutorial. However, you do want to be very careful here because whatever name you choose here will actually end up being part of your URL for your website. So do take a moment to think about what name you want. And we're going to just add in a readme file. You don't necessarily have to do this, but I do like having readme files that we can update later. And then we are going to click create. Okay, so here you can see my GitHub is Jenny Sloan, and now I've created my repository distill tutorial. So here we can click on it and we can see the only file right now is a readme file. So it's pretty much an empty repository, but we've created it. So now GitHub has this repository for us. So the next thing that we have to do is what we call clone our repository so that we can open it up in our studio. To do that, we're going to click on this green code button and copy the URL. Okay, and once you've done that, now we're going to go and switch over to our studio. In our studio, we are going to go into this top right corner where it says project and click project and we're going to create a new project. And here, because we're using GitHub, this is a type of version control. So we're going to click version control and Git. And remember, because we've already copied the URL, all we have to do is paste. So control V. And finally, you want to choose where you're going to have this stored on your computer. So for me, I'm just putting it straight on my desktop but please do take a minute here to browse and choose exactly where you want to have all of your files for your website stored. And once you've done that, go ahead and create your project. Okay, and here, now we see in our top corner, we're working in our distill tutorial project, and we can see we have our files, which of course only consists of the readme file right now. So what I'm gonna do now is close out, because I wanna show you, if we close out of our studio, remember I saved this project straight on my desktop, so now I have this folder that I can open. And rather than opening up our studio and navigating and trying to remember exactly where we were, we can open up our studio this way. So I just opened up the folder and now we can see this R cube here which stands for R project. And you can even see it's an R project file type. And all we have to do is double click on this. And now we're back right where we left off. We're back into our distill tutorial project with all of our files in the proper working directory. So this is really useful and this is how I'll always start the tutorials by opening up this project to work on. And so it was really important that we set up our um, project this way because now you can see we have a Git button here. So this allows us to communicate with GitHub, which is where, again, we're going to host our website. So our studio and GitHub need to be in constant communication with each other. And please don't worry if you've never used GitHub before. I'll walk you through all of the necessary steps along the way. Okay, so now that we have our GitHub repository and our RStudio project, of course we want to build our website. So to do this, we're going to need to make sure that we have the package distill installed. So you can go install.packages 
and type in distill. Now I already have this installed, but if you've never used it or installed the distill package before, go ahead and click enter and make sure to run that. And now we can call the distill library. And once it's installed, it will even start pop, it will pop up automatically and we can click enter. And once you have distill loaded in, now it will, our studio will recognize all of the functions that are part of the distill package. So for example, the first function we're going to use is called create underscore website, right? Of course we wanna create our website first. And you can see here, it even tells you this is part of the distill package. So this is exactly what we want. And now we have to set, there are a few different arguments that we have to put in. So the first one is our directory. And we're just going to put in a period here because our current working directory is already set up. So that's all that we have to do. We wanna give our website a title. So I'm gonna call this our girls website tutorial. And finally, the last argument is gh underscore, underscore pages. This stands for GitHub pages. And here we're going to put true, right? Because of course we want to make sure that it knows that we're hosting our website on GitHub pages. So once you have this, we can click enter. And just like that, you can see a lot of files have been added and our website, our default website is being built right now. Okay, so let's go over, make sure you're in this files, check, uh, click on the files tab here and we can see all of the different files that have been added. Okay, so the first thing we can just open up the first one here, so site.yaml. Here, ha this has a lot of the um, properties or configurations for our website. And we'll fill this out as we go. But I do wanna point out a couple of things. First, here we can see the output directory is set to this to docs. Okay, and you can see that there's actually a docs folder here. So this is where all of the files to actually build a website will be stored. So I definitely recommend not messing around, not touching this docs folder because you don't wanna accidentally mess anything up. Also here, we can see all of the information for our nav bar. And again, we'll come back to this later, but this is where we can really modify our navigation bar. Okay, and we also have an index.rmd file. So this is actually what will end up being your default homepage. And by default, home pages on websites will always look for a file called index. So whenever you see something called index, we just wanna think of that as your home page. And then finally, um, Distill automatically creates another file called about, and there's not really much here. This is just, you know, assuming you may want to have an about tab on your website, but this is up to you. We, you can either delete this or keep it. Um, and you can decide on that later. Okay, so I think the next thing that we're going to do is just try it to build our website. And I know usually at the top, there is a build tab, but a lot of times when, you're, when you've just created a new website, you'll actually have to restart the session. So I'm just going to close out and open it back up. And hopefully we'll see. Yeah, and now we see a build tab here. Okay, so all we're going to do is go and click build website. And here we go, just like that, we actually have our website. And now remember right now, we only are looking at this locally in our studio. So nothing has been pushed to GitHub, GitHub or anything yet but this just gives you a sense of what the very basic default settings for our website looks like. So we have our home page and we have an about page. Okay, let's go back to our studio. Oh, I will um, quickly point out, if this is your first time using Distill, 
you may have to install, it may ask you to install some packages when you try to build your website. That's perfectly okay. Go ahead and make sure you have everything installed that you need. All right, so now we have to decide how do we want to design our website. Specifically, what do we want our homepage to look like? And for this, and remember, just to show you, the Our Girls website looks like this. So I personally really like this. I'm a little biased because I designed it, but I like the setup and I think it's clean and really, really pretty. So I'll show you one place you can go to look at different templates. If you just Google GitHub, oh, I already have it here, Sean Cross Postcards. So this is another GitHub repository that has this postcards package. And now we can scroll down and you can see different templates that you can use using this postcards package. Okay, so here's one, the same one in blue. Uh, this is the one, this may look familiar. You can see this is the one on the R Girls website. So this is the one that we're going to use in this tutorial is called Trestles. But again, you can scroll down and look at all of the different options here. So feel free to choose whichever one you want. But in this tutorial, again, we're going to use the Trestles um, postcard. Okay, so back in our studio, here we want to run another distill um, function called create article. Oh, and you know what? Because I've restarted my R Studio, I actually have to load in the still again. And now it should recognize the functions. Here we go, create article. And here, remember, I want this to be my homepage, so I'm actually going to call it index. And the template, remember, we just picked out the trestles template. And the package is from postcards. OK, so let's try running this, see if that works. OK, so here, OK, so we actually got an error here. And that's OK, that's not a problem, because it tells us exactly what the issue is. It says the file index already exists, so it can't create it. That's and that's true, right? We can see our index file here. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this file by clicking, by checking it and then deleting this. And we'll close out. Oh, it will ask me, do you want to close out? Yep, because it doesn't exist anymore. So right now, at the, at the current moment, we do not have a homepage. We do not have an index file. But I'm going to just click the up arrow and rerun this line of code. And here we go, just like that, our index file is back. We just created this, but now it looks a little bit differently because it has the settings for the trestles template. Okay, so let's just test this out again and see if we can build our website now with our new homepage. Okay, so here we have another error, and that's okay because I actually anticipated this would happen. So here, we were unable to build a website, and we actually just have to add one line of code here. So we want to add the site. And this information here at the top of your page inside these three dashes, this is called your YAML. So we're just going to add the site parameter up here, and we're going to write distill and distill website, underscore website. And I'll save that, make sure to save it. And now let's try to build our website again. Okay, and now we can see it in our viewer, in our viewer page, and let's open it up full screen. And here we go, this looks awesome. Um, however, of course, it's all of the default settings. So we'll have to make a lot of modifications to this, but this is already looking really, really great. Um, so I'm really excited about this. If you've made it this far, congrats, you have at least a template of a website ready to go. And just, just to, let's just make one change as a very quick example. We'll change the title, so I'll just change this to our girls website. So 
tutorial. And again, you can actually, you can either rebuild or if you're just wanting to take a quick look at what one file looks like, you can click next. And here now we can see we've changed our uh, website title. Okay, so that's great. And now I'll end this tutorial by showing you and walking you through the steps to push all of the changes to GitHub. So let's go back to, because remember, right now all we have in GitHub is the README file. So we have to push all of our changes that we've just been working on over to GitHub. And to do this, you wanna remember there are three steps. You want to stage, commit, and push. And I actually have this written down in one of my blog posts. I'll just quickly open it up on my website here at jennysloan.netlify. Here, this is actually a tutorial for a blog down, but the steps, the step four is the same. So here we have to set up uh, GitHub. And now if this is your first time using GitHub, there are a couple of extra steps that you have to do in order to set up your username and your user email. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is, and this is in our studio, go to tools and navigate to shell. So let's do that. Tools, shell. And here I'm gonna minimize this so we can look at this side by side. So this is called the shell. And so again, if this is your first time, you'll want to put in, enter these few lines of code, just like you see it on this screen. So git config global username, and in quotes, enter your username, and this is your username on GitHub. Okay, and then click enter. I've already done this, so I won't click enter there, and also make sure to put in your user email. And you'll just put your email here. And again, click enter. And now everyone, regardless if you had to do that step or not, now we're going to do one final line of code, which is git add dash capital A. So this is saying we want to stage everything. All of the changes that we just made, we want to eventually push to GitHub. So this will stage all of the changes. Okay, and once it's done, you can close out and I will go back to our studio. So right next to the build tab, there's actually a git tab. And if we go to commit, we can see everything has been staged. So everything is checked here. So that was the command that we just entered. So we've already staged everything. So now the second step is to commit. Before you can commit, it's really important to leave yourself a message. Again, GitHub, we wanna think of this as version control. So it's really important to, to keep track of all of the changes you're making in, just in case you have to go back in time to an older version. So I'm gonna call this initial build. And then we can click commit. And once this close appears, you can click close and finally push. Okay, so here it looks like I either have an, in my, I entered my username or password wrong or I don't have the proper authentication. So chances are if this happens, you might have to set up what we call a personal GitHub token. So I'm gonna try that and see if that solves my problem here. And this is just a security measure that GitHub, um, that GitHub has is. So the first thing we're going to want to do here is make sure to install a package called use this. I already have this installed, so I won't do this. Let's close out. And now we are going to use this and create GitHub token and click enter. So this will automatically open up GitHub for us, and now we're going to, and you can see we're creating a new personal access token. So here we want to just put in our note to ourselves. So this is for distill tutorial. 
I'm going to set this so this token lasts for 90 days, and then I'll keep the defaults and set and just scroll down and click generate token. Okay, so here we just generated this token. This is very sensitive information. So once I finish this tutorial, I'll create a new token. But just to show you exactly what to do, you will copy your token here. You can see it says copied. And now we'll go back to our studio. And now we want to do a git creds and git creds set. So we want to set our token here. So here, press enter and enter your password or token. So I'm just pasting in that password that I just copied or that token that I've just copied. Okay, so now we've added the new credentials and it says done. So now fingers crossed, this will hopefully work. So let's go back to our commit. And you can see there's actually nothing here because we've already committed everything. So all we want to do now is try to push. So you can either do it here or we can actually just push it right here. Okay, great. So here we can see this is a good sign when it says head main. So that means everything has pushed successfully. So now let's go to GitHub just to confirm. And we'll have to refresh this page. And here, this is great. We can see, yes, in fact, all of our files have pushed to GitHub. Okay, so the very final thing I'm going to show you is we will go to settings within our repository here and go to pages. So we do have to set up one more thing within our GitHub pages. Here, we want to make sure that we select main and remember that we wanted the docs folder. So the docs folder is where all of the files for our website will be. So we want to click this and click save. And now you can see it says your site is ready to be published. However, this might take uh, a few minutes. So I'll just let this run for a few minutes um, and refresh it in just a couple of minutes and see to, just to make sure our website is working. Okay, so I'm going to try to refresh the page. And great, now we can see there's a green check. Your site is published, at, and this is the link. And remember I said that the repository name is important because it will be in the website name. And we can see, we can see that here, jennysloan.github.io and distill tutorial. So if you just go to this website now, you can see our website is up and running and it's live on GitHub. So this looks really great. I'm really excited. I'm glad everything worked. Got a couple of errors along the way, but figured it out in the end. So well done if you've made it this far and congrats on your new website. In the next tutorial, we'll jump right back into where we left off and we'll modify our homepage. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time.